Hello world, I'm LJ and this is LJ Go Sweden. Today it's time to talk about this car and why I am in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Sweden, next to snow, right here. Today it's time to talk about my pros and cons that I had by test driving this car overnight. Let's go. Okay guys, I have arrived at the Tesla service center. It is now time to board my car. <laughs> oh my God, it just opened already. Oh my God, I even have it. Which version do I have? Oh, they gave me the dual motor. They gave me really the long range version. I'm sitting in the car, I have now changed the language. It, it is such a long time that I have been in a Tesla so that I didn't even know how to find the language settings. Was there something else that I wanted to change? Uh, yeah, mirrors maybe. So I'm setting up everything and then I drive to my apartment. The overnight test drive is the most necessary thing to really know if you should buy a Tesla or not. So right now I actually have my overnight drive. If you're wondering what do you mean overnight drive, you can only book 30 minute test drives. Yes, that's true, but they offer overnight drives officially. And even if not, and you really have an interest in buying one of these cars, just call them. Ask them, hey, do you have the opportunity? Can I try it? Can I try charging at home? Or can I just, yeah, enjoy the car more, play around with the software and all these things. And this is what I have done. I am currently in my hometown in Sweden, in Örnsköldsvik. I have picked up the car at 3 p.m. today in Umeå. And I will have to bring that car back till tomorrow, 10 a.m. So why do I need this overnight test drive? Well, first of all, I have to check out how can I charge the car at home? Well, we don't have a charger there yet. We only have a normal power plug. And second of all, I love to camp. And as you can see back there, that is what I'm going to do tonight. I have already camped in a Model Y. I have rented the car last year, went to the North Cape and it was great. But now we have a new Model 3. So yeah, I really was thinking about, should I get the advantages of the refresh of the Model 3? Or should I take the bigger space in the Model Y and accept that it maybe is not the most updated car so far? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out with the camping, if the space is enough. What I can already tell you after driving a few hours, not everything that this car offers is a pro for me. But where do we start? Let's start with charging. Okay, so now Let's talk about some charging. As you can already see, I have plugged in the car. It is currently charging with 145 kilowatts. So we need to be over 50%. That is what I got told to deliver the car back. So I don't even know, is this a 150? Yeah, it is a 150 kilowatt max. So this is actually the max we can have. So. Yes, it is charging right now, but I think it should be fine. Right now, if I would leave, I would be back at 9.36. I have to be back at 10. So over 50 is possible, but I will definitely yeah, chill here until I have like 60, 70. But one thing I want to talk about with the charging situation is it just works. You have the cable, there you have a button on it. And when you click on it, the charging port just opens, but you can also do it on the screen like of course i cannot press it right now because it's connected but right there i could open the one or there's also a tesla typical command a voice command which is open butthole and then the charge port also open so there are many options to play around with this car here's the thing that i really don't understand with most people that are against electric vehicles about the charging thing yes i am sitting here right now charging the car but I enjoy it. You know, like 
there. I don't know, okay, it's too bright out there. But there's an IKEA. We have a Max here, so a Swedish fast food chain. There's a whole shopping mall. If you want to do something during your time, just take a walk, take a look. Or if not, just go on your screen, watch a movie. That's the thing with Tesla. Other manufacturers are also now trying to, yeah, have more entertainment in their systems, which is really a mandatory thing in my opinion, because you're not always in the, yeah, in the situation that you have a supercharger like here next to Ikea. Sometimes you really have the superchargers in the middle of nowhere. So it is good to have an entertainment system that runs YouTube, Netflix or whatever, that, that you can, yeah, enjoy the time doing something. And that is just the thing. It's, I don't see that right now, the waiting as a waste of time. I see it as an enjoyment because I can basically chill now. And whereas other people drive fast after work to get home, to chill on the couch or anything, I really see this already as chilling right now. Of course, it is not maybe as cozy as at home, but you can increase the temperature. You can watch a movie here. You have a really good all surround system. So what do you want more? Really? I don't get it. So this is the reason why I think Tesla did a really, really good job with the electric mobility. You know, oh, it is amazing. I'm just in love. And we still charge with 143 kilowatt. Right now, we pay 4.95 crowns per kilowatt hours. So around, yeah, maybe 45 cents. It is probably more expensive than charging in Germany, but still compared to all the competing charging networks in Germany, they are around like 60 cents, 55. And Tesla is most of the time really the cheapest. Due to those reasons, I really know like, that I, if I get an electric vehicle, it has to be a Tesla. If I don't get one, of course, Tesla doesn't build other cars, but then it's a different world. But in the electric world, I only see Tesla as a good car, to be honest. That's my honest opinion right now, so far. Like, of course, things can change in a few years. Maybe we have like other companies rising up and Tesla is falling down due to their, yeah, focus on the full self-driving or the robo-taxi. Of course, there might be reasons why Tesla loses the focus on their current car manufacturing because they convert into a new software brand. But if they don't get rid of the system they have right now and still improve it, I'm totally fine with that. I cannot complain. I really cannot complain. <sighs> okay. That was basically dealing at the superchargers. But also the other thing is that each of those chargers is fully connected in the software. For example, right here, I'm at this charger. We have 20 free stalls here. You can also see the prices up there. And then we have six more on this side, actually. Wait, are they the same price? Yeah, they are. Okay, so, and now it, see, it has updated. It was 20 before, now it is 18. So first it's this car and then we have another Model X besides me. In the bigger picture, you can see there's another charger in the south and in the north we have the one in Umeo and it even shows one of those other chargers which is not a supercharger, but it works. And the software in general is just amazing. So for example, if I just say now right now, hey, okay, I wanna go to Stockholm. Uh, let's go to the airport automatically puts the supercharger in there and it that's it it has already planned the whole thing it's done it's so fast it is just amazing how crazy this car is based on the software so as you can see right here it is still the old ui they have now updated it and i really hoped that the car already has received the update but unfortunately not so we have the car basically right here you can also see that the port is open right there. It is being charged. Uh, I have the settings in German right now, I'm sorry. That is another thing that I can tell you guys. When you do the overnight drive, the car changes the language and everything to the original settings, which is Swedish in this case. And usually I clicked on English, but now I basically misclicked to German and I was like, oh yeah, that's fine as well. So that is no problem. I don't want to talk too much in detail about everything because if you know Tesla, you know all of these. But I really am amazed how fast everything is. You go into the browser, bam, 
you type for example weather um, Stockholm Bam. Of course, it is also the mobile network which is being connected, but it is smooth. It is just like on your phone. On here, on here, of course, you can also activate the satellite view, which I actually prefer, but also that resets as well every time. And then you have the YouTube or like the cinema modes. You have like Netflix, YouTube, other things, maybe also dependent on your country. You have some games. So there's so much to do in this car which really gives the advantage of having yeah, an electric vehicle when you charge. So can I tell you anything more about this? I don't want to show every single detail because as, as I already said, I don't want to talk about the car in general. One thing I really have to talk about is the autopilot or the full self-driving capability. In America, I'm just amazed how much FSD is already capable in doing. But here in Europe, don't buy it. I promise you, this car has the full self-driving update or like the, the, at least the one that is allowed in Europe with the, it stops at stop signs and it stops at traffic lights, but it is just annoying because of, I think it is because of the regulations in the EU. You have to always give an input when the car wants to make something. And here, with the traffic lights, it is basically like seeing the lights and tells you, hey, I'm about to stop. Even if it's green, you have to push the accelerator to go over the green light. So in America, I think even with, if you don't have the full self-driving beta or supervised, it still would have stopped if it was red and continued when it was green. But in Germany or in Europe and Sweden, you are not allowed to do so. Same with the, with the lane change assistant. It works, but you have to give a pull, like another input to really tell the car, hey, I want to do that. The car is not allowed to do those changes just by you pushing the button, like the blinker. Uh, so it is not worth it. Unfortunately, the car also has not received the auto park feature yet, which is in America available, which seems really impressive there. I really think the basic autopilot is all you need, at least for right now, when you're living in Europe and I also will be taking that. And even the autopilot sometimes struggles, which is still, in my opinion, due to the fact that they don't update it anymore and they fully focus on the FSD. Because I have experienced some weird situations already today when you have another lane appearing, which is like a left turn lane, and you're going straight that the car is thinking like, oh, where am I have to go? And then it gives you like a phantom break and goes in the middle between those lanes. It's not the nicest so like of course i like to challenge the car and it is officially not even i think promoted to do things like this but if you are really like thinking oh i can use it like this be careful always even with the full self-driving of course but that's a different thing in america i would say let's talk about the steering wheel well the biggest complaint that a lot of people had with it is that we don't have any more stalks, but this is really, in my opinion, not a problem at all. I was in the beginning a bit skeptical. Also, when I had the 30 minutes test drive, I was like, yeah, I think I can get used to it. But now I have driven the car for, I don't know, I would not even say four hours. And driving around roundabouts is already the easiest thing in the world. Also with the drive or reverse, it really fits well like this. The only problem that I have with the steering wheel though is, if you take another look at it, we have this button right here, uh, which is now dealing with the autopilot or FSD or whatever, uh, which country you're from. And I have set this button to only one press to activate the autopilot because clicking it twice to activate it is just very annoying. I know that I lose the speed keeping assistant when I remove the double click thing, but it is worth it because when I drive the car, I want that it also steers itself anyway. So that's fine for me. Besides that, I really like the steering wheel. There is really nothing to complain about besides that button. For me, it would have been better if Tesla had just like put another button down here or here, which activates the autopilot, which is a bit more convenient than this, but yeah, maybe put something else on here. I don't know. Make this one programmable just like you have done with this one. That would be really cool and make a, yeah, autopilot button.
And then there's one thing that I did not talk about yet. And that is the speed. Zero to 100 in 4.4 seconds. And that is amazingly fast. <laughs> Holy moly. Like, for real, this is incredible. A few weeks ago, I was already trying the rear wheel drive version and it has zero to 106 seconds. And now having it in, yeah, 4.4 seconds, unbelievable. And yesterday when I tried it for the first time, I actually got already a little bit dizzy. So I can just imagine how crazy this has to be when you have a faster car like the Model S, Model S Plaid or any other like performance model. Just amazing. So like I really think I would get dizzy when I have such a fast car. Holy moly. One thing though that every person who has a Tesla is complaining about and I nearly forgot about it because it didn't really happen yesterday but it happened just right now are the wipers, the automated wipers. Because yesterday it was not, not appearing at all, but now just like with a low sun, the wipers started wiping. And I was like... So, to be honest though, I never used automated wipers in my life before on all the family cars that I have driven. Because first of all, they mostly didn't have those features. So it is not a problem for me. I just turn it off and then turn it on with the troll wheel because that is possible, like on one of the three settings. But for people who really, really are used to this, I can definitely understand why they are complaining. So I just hope that there might be a fix in the future that is working better, or Tesla could just include a rain sensor in the next cars. That would also work, probably. And it would probably be the cheapest fix. But yeah, oh, there's a 70 zone, it's another push. Ooh, hui, 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 hui. <laughs> okay guys i have made it i am now in the camping position i have found the spot i have yeah everything that i need right now of course i don't have any yeah too much professional stuff actually i was like when i go camping i have like an air mattress or something more nice. Right now I'm basically sleeping on those couch things that you can take off. It is really soft too, but still I really gain a lot of height and my knees hit that thing on the, yeah, I don't even know how you call it, on the back. And also I feel that my head is really, really high up at the door. So I basically can look outside, which is not the nicest feeling though, <laughs> but we will see. I will talk to you guys tomorrow morning. Let's see how it goes, especially also with the daylight already being up very early. Ah, yeah, it's going to be fine, but more on that later. Good morning world. It is currently yeah close to 6 a.m. in the morning. I definitely can say it is working. It is also not that uncomfortable. Of course, this not really depends on the Tesla. This depends on the on your mattress or whatever you're going to take to sleep on. And it is also really, really warm. And that is the thing, actually, because I don't really need to have it that warm. I have it set on 20 degrees right now, and that is just perfect. I feel it is kind of cool on my arms, but I also don't think the car is really capable of dealing with 20 degrees in here due to the fact that I have not put the AC to automatic speed or like a medium or high speed. I have put it to low fan speed because it is still getting noisy, you know? So right now I can hear the fan, but it's also okay. It is a, it is a noise that you really can get used to that doesn't really bother you when you sleep. There's another noise that is kind of more annoying but also I would say not the worst which is the heating pump I guess which always comes up every 15 to 20 seconds and makes like a I don't know if it is that but I really think so because I remember that from the Model Y camping in the North Cape that we had a really yeah 
you could really hear the heating pump but we also slept like at minus 30 degrees there but yeah i still have not checked how much percentage the car has left actually i can check it on the phone right oh that will be interesting and for your interest the sun was going up around four and before that however it was already kind of bright i remember i woke up at one in the morning and then at four I could feel the sun but still I was capable of sleeping like always like 30 minutes then taking the time sleeping another 30 minutes until I decided now like 20 minutes ago hey okay let's wake up <sighs> yeah but now let's talk about uh, the size thing well first of all we always have to remember it is key to level the car on a even surface because if you have it like down on the back you will always slide down or if you have it to the side you will slide to the side so in my case the ground that i have found is not 100 percent level i tried to make it as level as possible from the perspective where my head is it is perfect however i am slightly to the left and also due to this last couch thing you can see right here i have a bit more height on my head which still results in the end that my body is sliding to the trunk basically so i am always touching the trunk with my feet it would probably not be a problem if i would had a better setup but it also doesn't really bother me because i'm not really a person that sleeps full stretched all the time like i like to stretch but i also don't sleep like that you know i always put my legs a bit closer to the rest of the body so that is definitely okay. I don't really know though how it's going to be if you are larger than me. So I am 5'10", 5'11"-ish I would say in feet or 179 in meters if you want to know um, so that you have a comparison. And also one thing that is not the best unfortunately but I also think it is due to the fact that I just have, like I already said it yesterday, is the yeah the blocking thing i can just show you wait it's probably getting too bright no no it's okay this thing right here so you can see i'm already touching it back there down there and if you turn like if i like sleep on the side or oh, it's going to be difficult i don't know can you see it there's like not really much here and unfortunately we have a sharp edge here it is a bit more space down there but I, there's a, a corner so that could also be a problem if you have higher mattresses. I always woke up basically when I turned. However, the space is not the biggest problem of the car. But before I will be talking about the biggest problem, I will be showing you my sleeping area. Okay guys, I made it out of the car. As you can see, <laughs> there is actually still snow in this area. I also have checked the temperature. It is plus one degree right now. So I'm not spending too much time outside. But I just saw this car and I was like, man, this color also, it looks so good. Like, I'm serious. In the beginning, I was like, oh, that's so in your face, but it just looks good. And man, 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 man. And you can actually see there's still, yeah, like ice on the front. <laughs> so it is really cold or it was really cold that night. But I didn't, I didn't feel anything. That is just amazing. That is why I love Tesla. Camping in these cars. Oh, it works. It just works. And I have checked the, um, the battery that I have lost overnight. And you can make a guess. If you see this, what would you say? How much did I lose over this night? So we came here with plus two degrees. It is now one degrees. I started the camp mode at 11 p.m. And it is now after six and when i came here i already give you this information i was at 70 69 percent what would you say how much percent did i lose <sighs> well the answer is seven percent and if we convert this into a kilometer range it is around 40 kilometers that i invested over camping this is truly amazing with that low temperatures wow it's really crazy and i just saw that we have poop here but i think it looks really old i don't think it is from yesterday evening 
I could have also turned on the sentry mode <laughs> so that it records animals at night, but I don't even know if it works, first of all. It, like recording animals, I think they have to come really close. But still, this car, I love it. But there you can see, I cannot really see it because it's dirty. Can I open it now? Yeah, I can, because I have to phone, okay. So that is basically my setup. Oh, wait, I have to turn off the music. So for example, right now, I show you the app. Can you read anything? I have music in there, I turn it off. I still have the camp mode activated right here, 20 degrees. I can also do the defrost mode, other modes. If you don't know Tesla, then yeah, I will just give you a short thing. I can already send my new location, like for example, Umeo, where I bring the car away, right here. I can lock the car, open the frunk or the trunk, everything. Just amazing. So, but yeah, actually we need the trunk. So I clicked on it, it works. So I can check, uh, show you how it looks in here. Yeah, that is basically the setup. I know this looks kind of wrong now, but when I put my weight on it, of course it goes up and I also have placed the front seat so that it is kind of stuck there. And if we look on the back side, that is basically it. And now I can also tell you Two people also fit in this car, definitely. It's going to be a bit more closer, so if you have a close friend or relationship, that definitely works. I still want to say, look at this color. Oh, I love the white interior, but I would never get it. I would just never get it. And there you can see that thing that is a bit annoying though when you have high knees or like a <laughs> very big hip, let's just say it like that, but still. It is a nice setup. It's now the first time that I actually took a seat on the back seats because I've never sit in here and I was thinking like when I go camping, like really camping, I also want to work somewhere and I don't want to work on the seat with the steering wheel. Of course I could also work probably on the other one, but back here it is so spacious it is amazing. So actually I think working in the back seat is also so easily doable, but I understand what a lot of people complain about, which is like the height distance from the, from the bench to the knee, because usually you want to have like the leg touching that and we have so much space and it's a bit too high and you don't really have space to put it under the front seat. I, I definitely think what a lot of people will be doing if you have only like four people in the car, they will like spread their legs so that they can, yeah, put that close to each other. If you have five people, of course, in the car, but I also don't want to recommend five people in this car anyways, because the middle person has the screen right in front of them and it feels a bit like you could hit the screen with the shoes. So that is, mm, that's one thing where I would be a bit like scared if you own the car and someone like of your friends accidentally hits it because it's three people moving in the back. But it is still amazing what you can do with the screen. So right now I've just decided for fun to let a video of mine run and it just finished. And we could now watch another reaction from the Croatian e uh, Eurovision song, but we don't do that. And also this screen, it's just so smooth. I could also go on Netflix, we could play games. And on the back screen, you can actually play games, watch videos all the time and you can do it separately from the front screen. So when the, when the driver's driving and you want to watch something, you can do it here. You can even listen to your own music on here. When you connect, for example, your own Bluetooth headphones, then you can just listen to that in here. Whereas the driver, for example, could listen to the radio, to traffic information or whatever. And of course, you can also do your own AC things. And one thing which is, in my opinion, really funny, you can, <laughs> you can annoy the, the guy sitting next to the driver by moving the seat to the front and to the back. I, I like the feature if there's no one sitting there, but it would be nice if it, like if Tesla or if the car would recognize if someone is sitting there that you cannot do it. But that is the car. So what can I say? Well, I think it is time for a summary. Okay, guys. So what do I think about the new Tesla Model 3 long range? Well, first of all, the positives. It has a long range. I was so surprised 
how convenient it is. I have an average consumption of around 18 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, but I'm also usually not a fast driver. I drive the speed limit or sometimes even slower than that because I have no rush. So why? There is no need to speed for me. So that is why this is of course already a really, really good car for me. Then of course, all the points that I have shown, the charging thing, the software, everything works. It is everything connected in one system. Basically, this is the Apple under the cars. It is one world. And if you're using the whole world together, then you will never have any problems. But if you get out of the world, you can have problems just as other people do. Like, for example, go to other superchargers or slow chargers or things like this. But that is just, of course, the world we're living in. But because this video is not about like all the pros, why you should buy a Tesla and all those things, I will be talking about the cons. And actually, the biggest con that I have with this car is the ground clearance. Like for real. The car is so low, Unfortunately, I have slightly touched the ground like once or twice with this car just by going on my driveway on the apartment because it is going uphill and due to the rain and the winter, the, the ground kind of sunk. And so you have weird holes basically everywhere. You can even see holes here. I don't know if you can really see them, but yeah, like this, just way worse at home. And I really tried to go slow over them and even tried to like move around as much as possible. But there's always like a very short, small area that touches the ground. And this is, ah, it's so painful. Like I don't want to do it. And I know that when you increase the ground clearance, you will lose range because you have a higher air resistance and everything. That's the reason why the Model Y is, I think the better car to go in Sweden and Norway, camping and everything. But uh, is this a problem for me? I don't know yet, guys. I really have to think about this. And then there's the other question that I have to think about. This is a long range. It's an all-wheel drive. The one that I'm thinking about is the cheapest one, which is a rear-wheel drive. And in summer, there is no problem. So I don't ever expect to have any problems in summer, neither with the range and especially not with the traction. But what about winter, when it's icy? I don't know. I really don't know. And unfortunately, we have summer right now. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so I will not know the result until I have made a decision. And I even don't know the result when I take this car, because then I would never receive an answer if it really was worth the extra money. Of course, you get more speed, dual motors, and even more speakers and subwoofers. Is that all worth for me? Because right now, as I said, I'm, I'm just a normal boy. Moved from Germany to Sweden. I don't have millions on my bank account to just say like, oh yeah, let's buy this car and get this, this nice color, the white seats or whatever. So I don't know. Other things that I remember that I didn't mention before of the port situation in the car. So for example, when you charge your phone or if you want to charge your laptop or other devices, you only have USB-C ports in this car and you have one of those, back in time you said like it was those lighting thing for the cigarettes where you can also plug in things, but there's no USB-A and especially I have an old MacBook which uses the normal standard household plug and then there's a wire coming out of it. I cannot charge that in here. I didn't really think about things like that because when I go camping, of course, I want to use my laptop to do work. <sighs> I think there are probably options to make it possible to charge your MacBook, your older MacBook also with a USB-C converter. But those are the things. One other question, if you drive a new Tesla like this or the Cybertruck or the Model S and the Model X2, how can you adjust the autopilot speed from the traffic sign when it doesn't adjust it manually. Because on the old Model Y and the old Model 3, you could touch the traffic sign symbol or pull the right stall up or down, I don't remember anymore. But then it basically changed the speed to the one from the traffic sign. But now I didn't really, yeah, I couldn't really adjust the speed there anymore. Maybe I have the wrong setting, but if you know anything about that, that would be really nice because even though, and that's another thing, the traffic signs are 
may maybe recognized 70% of all times, which is really bad. I don't care too much because I still watch the street. I watch the traffic signs and I don't really trust anything. Same with the auto wipers. I already talked about them. I think those are things that I can definitely live with. But of course, it would be nice if they would work. For now, I can just say it was definitely the best thing that I could have done to have a long test drive with this car because now I know what I will be dealing with driving this car when I buy it in the positive and in the negative ways with camping, charging and all of these things. But what do you guys think? Should I buy a long range Model Y or should I really keep it low for the beginning? It is my dream to drive a Tesla. Of course, there's always a future where you could get the better car, the newer car. And that's why I think like getting the cheapest, newest is at least the, if I am stuck on the Tesla idea, it is the best thing I could do in the beginning. But I don't know what about winter though. I really don't know. Okay, and with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and feel free to include any opinions on the Tesla situation, on everything. And I'm looking forward to hopefully do more content when I have my own car, whatever it might be in the future. But until then, have a good one.